if you remember this, but this is what I wore the first couple of times I did this. And now it's covering up the television screen, which is bouncing like back. So we covered it. Anyway, um, this is going to be uh, a hopefully interesting. Uh, it's in response, really, everything, of course, uh, during this year is in a response to what's going on this year. This year of 2020 vision. Uh, brought about through the purgation of all sorts of old stuff coming up from within us, from within you, from within me, from within the collective uh, that is um, really connected to, on an astrological level, a very rare conjunction that is ongoing between Saturn, Jupiter, and Pluto since about the beginning, uh, since the middle of January. And it's going to go on until basically the end of the year. So it's an extremely strong and powerful purgation of all the junk that's been underneath or, you know, uh, long-standing problems which seem like they're overwhelming. They seem like they're way beyond our ability to personally cope with them and so forth. Um, and one of the things I've noticed <clears throat> as a person who is not full of fear during this period of time, uh, that first of all, that, that's rare, and secondly, that what people are afraid of is their own bodies. And that kind of blew me away when I started to realize that. Yes, they're afraid of death, and they're afraid of their own bodies. Those are the two things, and they're connected, of course. Afraid their bodies are going to die. They're afraid of their own bodies, but then I, they must identify with their bodies, or they wouldn't be afraid they're going to die. So it's all very contradictory. But in any case, um, that's the bigger context. Uh, another context that's slightly more personal is, uh, I'd say probably six months ago, I asked <clears throat> all my brothers and sisters, of whom six are still living, I had seven before, so there were eight of us all together, if they wanted to let the rest of us know what was going on with their own bodies. I'm the oldest, I'm almost 78 now, I'll be 78 in December, uh, but they, they range back 16 years, so that's like 62 would be the youngest, and so everybody is certainly dealing with aging issues, no doubt. And uh, what are they? I'm just curious because, of course, a lot of them are going to be genetic, and it would be nice for us to know what they are. But I was fascinated to find out that the only two people that responded to me were the two people right next in line with me, Marty and Paula. And both of them have issues with their knees, which is interesting because knees is... Um, governed by Saturn, one of the planets that we're talking about here. And the other things that are really governed by Saturn in terms of the body are nails, teeth, bones, skin, hair, all of those things. They have to do with form and the covering of form. They have to do with structure. So uh, <coughs> you're one of the people that has some basic old issue that's been down there a long time and it's been gradually working its way to the surface, coming surfacing now in a different way than before and making you come to terms with yourself and your own body, um, don't be surprised. So I'm gonna give you mine, which is, I already mentioned it the last time we did one, I think when I mentioned that I now have a hole where a tooth used to be. So I'm gonna talk about my relationship to my, a part of my body, which is my mouth, okay? My mouth. And ultimately, my mouth, of course, is part of my body, which I've had to get used to having a body, like we all had to get used to having a body when we came into this planet. We're, we're really immortal spirits, but we came in here to this three-dimensional place, and we got used to, um, you know, the sudden shock of pain. Can you imagine the, the baby when they first felt that sudden experience of being encased in something? There <coughs> <coughs> goes my throat, <coughs> which is connected to my mouth. Suddenly uh, recognize that they, oh my God, what is this? Where am I? Okay. So in my own case, and this is the genetic part, my father had very bad teeth. Uh, so I, I think I'm the only one that has as bad teeth as he, did, as he did. I had many, many cavities when I was growing up. And I had one experience, though, with my teeth that has to do with my teeth, 
which I am incredibly grateful for. So what I want to do is give an example of a, a part of the body that one considers, you know, problematic. Um, and everybody's got something. And what are the experiences of the, uh, that you've had with that part of your body which actually teach you gratitude? Uh, because that's what's happened with me. Okay, so I had big teeth in a small mouth. So my my front teeth started to protrude. I became, you know, a buck tooth kid, which was, you know, kind of embarrassing. I was a little young to be that embarrassed yet, but I was somewhat, I mean, I noticed people call me that. And my parents actually, um, you know, we were lucky that they could send me to an orthodontist, which was a rare thing back then. Uh, we were lived in Twin Falls, Idaho, <clears throat> and I had to go two and a half hours away by bus to go to the orthodontist, to go to Boise, because it was the bigger town. And the first time I went, of course, they had a, an older, uh, you know, a 12-year-old accompany me or a 15-year-old accompany me. I was nine years old. But the next time I went, I convinced them to let me travel alone. And so as a nine-year-old, they actually let me do this. I don't know if anybody would let any kid do this now, given what's the strangeness that's going on uh, during this time with stealing children and trafficking children and so on. But back then, that wasn't even a consideration. It was more like, would she get lost? Could she do this on her own? She's only nine years old. She'd have an appointment as soon as she got there, but then she'd have four hours before she came home. What would she do with her time? Well, I'll tell you, that was that experience that I would have every month or every two weeks, depending how long it would be before I had to have my braces adjusted again. And that went on for a couple of years was really wonderful because for the very first time in my life, I got to experience freedom and independence. And I got to explore a world that I didn't know about, that nobody even knew I was there, but I was very full of myself doing it. What I would do would be walk around that beautiful leafy, leafy old city and I'd keep the Owyhee Hotel, which is tall at that point, in my sights. The, the sign for the Owyhee Hotel was very tall. And so that way I'd know where I was. I'd know how to get back to the Owyhee Hotel and from there where the bus station was. And it was something that just, uh, I've never forgotten it because that taste of freedom, that taste of independence for a, for a Sagittarian person who, uh, when she was small, when I was small, I was conditioned like all of us are but to be a very fearful child. And that had to do with my <clears throat> relationship to the bomb. I think I've mentioned that before. Uh, but in any case, this was like a rare respite that I had. So I can thank my, my badly constructed jaw and teeth for my first taste of freedom. And I will never forget that. Okay, fast forward now until I was in my late 30s. <laughs> now I had a situation in my in my late 40s, or my late 30s, where, I think I've talked about this, the bad man, we talked about the bad man, my, my experience with the bad man, which, not surprisingly, had a, it produced something physical, because it was an experience that was mental and emotional and spiritual, which produced something physical, and that is what happens, that the body absorbs what the mind, what the mind thinks. The body absorbs what the, what the emotions feel. The body absorbs what the spirit's direction is. And reflect and will create something that is not um, in the natural order. So it'll create a, something difficult. Uh, so you'll leave a, so leave a trace of a difficult experience in the body itself. And um, that was, what happened was during that time, I felt so shut down by him that I, I was clenching my jaw so that I couldn't speak. I, I couldn't get my truth out. I couldn't say what was on my mind. I couldn't speak up. I was afraid. And that went on for a long time till I finally broke the spell. But afterwards, a couple months later, I started to experience this terrible um, I now know what it was. It was an exudate, uh, kind of a, uh, an infection, that uh, some kind of fluid that was coming down through the jaw and coming up through this gum line 
uh, by this front tooth, the one that's out now. Okay, so it was coming up there, and it was, it and it was just tremendously painful. It was tremendously painful, and finally, that got solved first with penicillin, <clears throat> penicillin, and then more naturally with um, B, B, not pollen. So B, I um, used propolis. I thought, okay, after after the penicillin, okay, I'll do the antibiotics because it was clearly uh, dangerous, and I was going to lose my tooth or teeth. Uh, because the thing was making everything very loose and it was really extremely painful, but I did manage to find what I needed, which was a propolis. <clears throat> so I would put that on my gum every night and gradually it got better. However, the gum stayed uh, an angry red for years and anytime I'd go to the dentist, I, they'd go, what? You know, I'd say, oh, don't worry, it's getting better. And it was, it was getting better. However, there was permanently, the gum line had dropped somewhat on that one tooth. So it, it, it ate away at that uh, place. Okay, so fast forward to uh, moving to Bloomington. Uh, always, I've not been a kind of person that's gone to doctors. I just don't go to doctors unless it's absolutely essential. But I've always gone to the dentist because I knew that my, you know, that's my area of, of weakness is, is my teeth. And so I, I have been faithfully seeing a dentist four times a year three or four times a year depending get my teeth cleaned and and he's been very concerned about my my teeth especially uh, where this one wa is was and there's a couple up here too and uh, you know at first he did x-rays for me and then he wanted to do them again and a few years later this has been 17 years now and I said no I don't want x-rays I don't like x-rays either so he just kept doing what I wanted and cleaning the teeth but then <clears throat> It's just gotten to the point where um, this tooth here started to come up slightly and it was obviously coming out very, very slowly. And he said, yeah, your, that tooth is going to go. And he said, then when it goes, I can fix, I can shave the tooth off, the same tooth and um, cement it, not cement it, but put a wire behind it with other teeth so it, it'll look better, I guess. I guess that's what it's for is so it won't look like a hole in my mouth, which it is right now. And I said, well, okay, let's, let's think about it. I'll do, I will agree to do x-rays again to see what's going on underneath. Because he said, I don't know if I can even do it because, the, you know, who knows how much um, the, not just the gum line is gone, but who much, how much have the, has the bone of the jaw gone? Okay, and likewise up here. So we did x-rays on both of those. And I went back to see him a couple of weeks ago, or last week. So this is my Saturn-Pluto. You know, everybody's got some kind of major Saturn-Pluto issue if they have that in their chart to be activated in the cardinal signs of the uh, somewhere between 18 and 20, 20, 18 and 18 to the end of the sign in Aries, Libra, Cancer, or Capricorn. Then you're going to be in, enduring, enjoying uh, some kind of long-term situation during this period of time which you have to come to terms with so I went there I was prepared to come to terms we did the x-rays and indeed we found out that there's been significant bone loss here and here okay so I am probably going to be losing four more teeth you'll be able to to put this one back in there to some extent but um you know, I mean, it, who knows how long it'll last before those teeth start to, to leave. So I am seriously going to look like a meth head at some point. And that's very interesting. So this is the next thing that's important. That the, So the first thing is the gratitude I felt for the freedom and the independence I got from having to go to the orthodontist. The second thing is recognizing just how much the body does respond to whatever's going on with us otherwise that the body is a reflection of what, what our choices are, basically. And the body is going to just constantly hold that something for our memory so that we won't forget. And then the third thing is this right now, which is going to be going on for the rest of my life. And it has to do with truly learning to live from the inside out, which of course is what I want to do anyway, and what I say the crone does instead of the outside in where you're worried about other people's opinions of you other your reputation what you look like and so forth you're moving from the universal energy which is expressing itself through you and so truly this is uh, the job of a person 
as they get older to be able to do that no matter what, no matter what goes on with the body, because the body really is, you know, it's a temporary. It's starting already to effervesce, you might say. This is what I call it, the effervescence of the body. And um, it's just, it's a long-term process. I don't know how long it'll take, but um, will I still be speaking? I don't know. Will I be too vain to, to open my mouth? I hope not. And it's kind of interesting because in the, um, there's one symbol system in astrology where the, the planets, you know, you, with the symbol systems you say, oh, each planet has a certain degree, each degree has a certain symbol attached to it. And the symbol attached to my moon, which is the part of your, it's a part of you that has to do with the subconscious, has to do with memories, has to do with your childhood, has to do with your, your you know, what's underneath that, that you're not conscious of normally, but it it's, affects you all the time. Um, the symbol for my moon is, in this system, is the man with no mouth. So, you know, given the fact that uh, I've made my living through my mouth, basically, with, uh, you know, doing charts and <clears throat> giving presentations and giving talks and uh, so forth, um, it's a very interesting indication of what's ahead. I don't know what's ahead, but, uh, you know, on any kind of mundane level, it's not fun. Uh, but on the other hand... Um, I do already feel a sense of gratitude for the kind of lessons that, that my mouth is actually teaching me.